All right, Leviticus chapter number 23 this morning. Uh, we started dealing last week with the seven feast days uh, of, for the children of Israel. Uh, these seven feast days are also called high days. Uh, you find that over in the New Testament when Christ died. He died on the preparation for the Sabbath, which was in the high day on Thursday. Uh, then they had the preparation for the regular Sabbath, Sabbath that was on uh, Friday, and the Sabbath they couldn't go and anoint that body, so he lay in the grave 72 hours. Everybody left him alone. Amen. Took care of business. I thank God for that. But these are high days. Uh, we started out in verse uh, chapter number 23 with the regular Sabbath, which he put first. That's interesting. Amen. Notice what he said, six days, in verse number three, shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. That means a holy day. You do no servile work. Uh, the Jews didn't even uh, pick up a bundle of sticks. Uh, they didn't do any cooking on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is Saturday, not Sunday. Uh, it was given one to the Jews under the law. But God has always chosen that man would work six days and rest on the Sabbath, uh, seventh day. Now, we live in days where uh, everybody now, they just want to work all the time. I'm talking about these companies, uh, crazy hours. Uh, they don't care anymore. Uh, we had a car pass us this morning. Boy, it just it caught my attention. We, we just pulled on uh, out uh, where... Anderson Drive comes in, was coming down West Main Street. The car came around us probably pushing 100 mile an hour. Had the flashers going. I mean, buddy, they were flying down that. that it just startled me, you know. You're not expecting somebody to be running 100 mile an hour on West Main Street. Now, I understand they had a problem going. They were watching for traffic, and if I had a, my wife had a heart attack, I'd be driving 120. So I just tell them, you all be careful out there now. Amen. But I told Barbara, I said, well, they don't have to worry about traffic. You say, why? Because most young people, and I'm talking about young people from 50 years old and under, are forsaking God all over the place. Now, you're talking about an unchurched. Boy, I mean to tell you, it's, it is sad what's going on in the Bible Belt. I told her, except for a few old people driving down the road, there's nobody out here this morning. Most young people just listen. And that and that's a generation. He talked about there was a generation after Joshua. I said they knew not God. Not that they didn't know about God. They didn't know God. They didn't care about knowing God. We live in that time. So we find here a Sabbath day of rest. Now we uh, are here this morning on the first day of the week because the law has been fulfilled and now we've got a resurrection day and God uh, has us to worship on a Sunday. So he gave that. And then the second thing we did, he started dealing with these are the feast of the Lord. In verse number 4, and verse 5, in the 14th day of the first month at Eden is the Lord's Passover. That goes back to Exodus chapter number 12 and 13. What happened was when he brought them out, listen, he brought them out, he, he, he brought the ten plagues upon the, uh, the Egyptians. Uh, boy, that hard-hearted, hard-headed Pharaoh, he refused. Matter of fact, one time he said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Uh, well, he found out. They took the firstborn. When they did, he, he kicked them out of the land, basically, but before they went that night, they had to kill what's called the Paschal Lamb. They took that blood and put it on the doorpost and lintel over the door. And he told them, you'll stay in all night. Don't go out. If anybody goes out, the firstborn going to die. So you need to stay in. They stayed in that night. And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Same thing with the child of God today. When he sees the blood, he went that that blood's been applied, sitting on the mercy seat today, and it's the blood, by the precious blood of Christ. First Peter talks about the precious blood of Christ. Then he talks about being born of incorruptible seed, or of corrupt, incorruptible seed, not corruptible seed, by the word of God. And he said, one which liveth. I thank God this morning the Bible we've got in our hand is alive. 
not dead. This thing will work. You put the word of God out, it will accomplish that which God has sent it for to accomplish. It won't return unto him void. And uh, so we find uh, that the first feast was the Passover. Go back to Exodus chapter number 13. Then in verse number 6, we found the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, it started on the 15th. You had to pass over on the 14th, but when they went out, they went out with unleavened bread. After they ate that Paschal lamb, he told them, you make bread, but it's to be unleavened bread. It's a beautiful type of the child of God. After salvation, they're supposed to put away sin. We live in days where they think, well, you can just you can know Jesus and live any way you want to, I guess. Just don't make it that. You know, aren't you glad God is an understanding God? Let me tell you something. He understands one thing. He told the child of God, you be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And you find a new heart, a new nature put within the child of God, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if, and he uses that word as conditional, if any man be in Christ... That salvation, if you're in, then you're a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are, not will be, are become new. Just the moment you get saved, everything's different. That's an amazing thing. I, I, not that I gave up everything immediately. God, God cleaned my mouth up. I got the booze out of the house. Uh, cleaned up a lot of things but let me tell you something. I, I, saw, I saw myself in sin in a different light. Uh, just before God began to work in my heart and just God said, I want this. I give him that. He said, I want this. I'll give him that. And I, I, and I thank God for it. Amen. Just gave him everything he wanted. Some of them took a little bit longer than others. But we find the Feast of Unleavened Bread. When that Passover took place, that salvation took place, then they were to be unleavened. Now, that was from the 15th to the 21st of the month. It was a seven-day period that they had what they called unleavened bread. Then the third one we find is, is the uh, feast of, of the uh, uh, first, first fruits. Amen. And that, that's, that started actually on the 16th day of the month. So you had three things, the 14th, the Passover, the 15th, the beginning of unleavened bread. The 16th, the feast of, of, of weeks, the feast of the first fruits. And what they did was they, they gave to God of the first fruits. Everything that they gave belonged to God. You look at that in salvation. Your Bible is an amazing book. I mean, this Bible is right. You get saved on the 14th, unleavened or sinlessness, hey, start to put the sin away on the next day, and then you give God the first fruits. Just bam, bam, bam. A lot of people don't ever get that right. Uh, but that's the way God was working here. So what they did was they had the day of the first fruits. He went on and down, and, and he talks about these, and, and thank God, in verse number 10, the first fruits of the harvest. Now, we got through this and last week, so what I want to begin dealing with is, I want to drop down to verse number 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From that day, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So he takes you back to the first day of the first fruits. He's talking about this feast that he's going to have now is the feast of, of, of actually Pentecost. He said in verse number 16, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days. So now from that first day after that Sabbath, they numbered 50 days, 49 uh, days, seven weeks, all right? For seven weeks, they had what they called the feast, uh, the feast of Pentecost. It came on the 50th day of the month. Now, he's going to deal with that here. But verse 16, even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number 50 days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out 
of your habitations, two wave loaves of two tenths deals. That's an interesting word, deals. Two tenths. They say that that was an epith. Epith was a, a bushel, so a tenth of a bushel is what they made these out of. Uh, but it's, it's interesting he used that word. I tried to look it up several different ways, and it doesn't give a lot of explanation. So I'm just going to say historically, they say that it ties to the epith. But he said this, that they shall be of fine flour. Boy, they sifted this, this flour. Uh, a lot of people, when they bake, they don't use sifters anymore. Sifters really help when you're making bread and different things like that. All right, uh, Miss Janet uses that. Hey, we used to have an old sifter. You poured it in there and turned that little handle, boy, and I mean, it just, it took everything out of there that needed to come out, and you had the finest flour you've ever seen. Uh, they used that sifter on it. So he said that it shall be a fine flour. They shall be baking with leaven. Now, for the first time, they're going to add leaven to it. Thank God for leaven. Amen. I, I, I've eaten uh, unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is virtually tasteless. Uh, but boy, you put that leaven to it. I still remember my mother making that homemade light bread. Uh, we'd come in, and when we did, those baking pans were covered with a dish towel. We knew, we knew what was coming after that. Boy, and they'd rise up. Mom make those and put them in that oven. We'd stand around and wait. When she took them out, when they were too hot to handle, we'd I'd try to pick them apart and put butter in those things and eat them. Everybody in the house got fat, so Mama quit making them. Uh, but he talked about for the first time, he's going to add leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. So what they're going to do, they're going to make two wave loaves with leaven, and they're going to wave them before God. It's interestingly added leaven. Why? Because when you and I come before God, we've got leaven in our lives. Uh, there's not one here this morning that's perfect. But I thank God that we can approach Him. I'm not talking about just a gross, willful sin, folks. Uh, but the Bible says if we say we have no sin, we make Him a liar. Truth's not in us. And I thank God that He allows us to come before Him in the state that we are in, uh, in this Adamic flesh. So he said that they're the first fruits unto the Lord. Verse 18, And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock and two rams. And they shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord with their meat offering, with their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. Now on the Pentecost they had to offer these lambs, uh, the bullocks, uh, the, the rams. They had to offer them in front of God. And these were burnt offerings that they did. They burnt these offerings. Verse 19, Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. So they had burnt offerings then they had sin offerings, and then they had peace offerings on that 50th day. Uh, you get to the New Testament, the Lord told the church when he went away, he told them, you, you just go and uh, you just stay together until the fullness of God comes. And that was in Acts chapter 2, but it, the Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh, where God just simply met with his people that day in Acts chapter number 2, so it was a very important day to the Jews. He went on down and said in verse 21, Ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day, you're doing this offering, that it may be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Now in the 50 days of Pentecost, those seven weeks, people worked. But they were still holy Weeks They were dedicated to the Lord, but, you know, the Bible said if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat, and so they just continued to work. But on that 50th day, work ceased. Everything stopped. He said, you shall, verse 21, make it a holy convocation unto you, no servile work done therein. It shall be statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Now, this was something that was going to go and take place until Christ came. 
When Christ came, I thank God he fulfilled all, all of the law. But at the same time, we find that it's going to be every generation. Verse 22, And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleanings of thy har harvest. Thou shalt leave them for the poor to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Go back to the book of the days of Ruth, uh, when Ruth came back with Naomi, back to Bethlehem, Judah. Uh, they, uh, Ruth went out to glean in the harvest. It, it was the days of barley harvest, and she went, and it was her lot to light on the portion of the field that belongeth unto Boaz. I like that. Providence of God, he had her glean in the right place. But when she came there and she began to glean there, when Boaz saw her, he asked who she was. And when they told him, he said, I want you to drop hands full of purpose in front of her. Leave extra. But what they did, they didn't go back over and glean these fields again. They, they left. There was, enough, uh, there was enough grain left there for poor people to come in and get that and to make their bread and things with. And he said for the stranger also, I always think of the, the book of Ruth when he uses that. Uh, she was a Moabitish girl. Uh, you know, the Bible talked about an Ammonite and a Moabite not coming into the house of the Lord until the 10th generation. And God put uh, a Moabite girl in the genealogy of the Lord. She was the great-grandmother of David. Uh, so we found her here, but he said, you leave them for the poor and the stranger. He said, hey, when you gather your grapes and everything else, they didn't go back and reshake the trees. They didn't go back and look under every leaf to make sure. You know, after somebody pretty well picks the grapevines clean, I can go back and still uh, get me a couple of hands full back in there. Boy, they hide underneath the leaves. He said, you don't go back and you redo that. He said, that's for the poor people. Verse number 23, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel in the seventh month, in the first day of the month. Now, he's going to skip up to seven months. Ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Now, you find a, a lot of... Uh, uh, different thoughts on what these uh, Feast of Trumpets was. Uh, that would be in our month of October. But what they did, they, they, they blew these trumpets. And when I think of trumpets, I think of victory. Uh, boy, when they went into Jericho with, and they, they blew those trumpets, uh, that seventh day they blew the trumpets and the people shouted and the walls fell flat. It's a type of the victory that God is going to give them when they come into the land of, uh, of Canaan and take that land, actually take it away from the Canaanites, and for the first time Israel is going to have a national home as a people. Uh, they had a, a home uh, for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as they sojourned there, but the Bible said that they never really had a city. They just simply dwelled in tents. Over in the Middle East you've got a lot of people that they call Bedouin people. These Bedouin people are tent dwellers. That they just simply have flocks. Uh, they've got them all over the desert. They'll take those flocks from one, to one oasis to another. These oases normally had several wells, and they had a lot of green grass and things that they could. So they'd go and they would feed there, and the grass was literally uh, cropped off, and then they'd move to the next place. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were that type. They just simply would tent dwellers. But for the first time, God is going to give Israel the land that he promised Abraham. He told Abraham, every place your foot is trod, that's from the Euphrates River to the north, all the way down to the Nile, Nile River in Egypt. Uh, a lot of the Egyptians claim that land over there today, but I've got news for them. that That's going to be uh, God's people's land throughout eternity. And we find here on that seventh month, there's going to be a memorial of blowing of trumpets. That memorial is looking back. You know, we have uh, memorial days, uh, 
July the 4th, Independence Day, we look back, uh, blowing of trumpets. Boy, thank God for July the 4th. I'm glad July the 4th, 1776, that they, they uh, signed the Declaration of, of Independence and started a nation that, did you know America was the first republic that was ever recorded in history? They keep talking about democracies. America was never intended to be a democracy. It was a republic. They called it the great experiment. Could man run his own country without a monarch, without uh, a dictator, so to speak, who set up laws and ruled in force? Could he do that? And we found out 250 years later they're not doing so hot. All right, somebody said the great experiment is failing now because, uh, hey, you know what people want? They want the dictator. Uh, they want the governor to be their big daddy and their mama and everything else and feed them, take care of them, protect them and lead them, and, and the people just, just coast right on through. But what we find here, it's a memorial. We have memorial days. We have days where we, set, uh, we go back uh, D-Day and... and uh, uh, days of that, uh, like that, we go back and we have a memorial for them. He's setting up a memorial day of the victories that God has given and will be given Israel uh, in the days to come. But he said there's, it's an holy convocation. He said, ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh, a lot of people get forth of July and memorial days and these days off. Uh, that's biblically based that you do that. Verse number 26, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. A lot of people think of atonement uh, when you get around Easter time, but that was Passover, not atonement. Atonement was in the 10th month. And there they took that lamb, and once a year they took that lamb, they took the blood into the Holy of Holies and put it on the mercy seat uh, for an atonement. The word atonement just simply means to appease or cover, to put something off. There's no saying never put off until tomorrow, which you can do today. But then I found out spiritually never do today what you can pray over until tomorrow, all right? Okay. So we're a little bit different spiritually sometimes. But they, they, they have the day of atonement. I usually hyphenate that word, at one mint. It's where God makes sinful man at one with him through the sacrifice of that Paschal lamb. And when they did that, they took that blood. <clears throat> but he said, it's the day of atonement. He said, ye shall afflict your souls. That's a memorial of sin, a remembrance of sin. I think it's good for us to remember our sin. If you don't remember your sin, you won't repent of your sin and then uh, get things right with God. I think it's a good thing when we look inward, what they did on that day, they looked inward every year. Why did, that, <clears throat> why did that lamb have to die? That lamb had to die because of their sin. Why did Christ have to die? He had to die because of our sin. Hey, hey, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, so sin would not be taken away. They were under atonement, were under propitiation. Propitiation means that he appeased God by taking our place. He died in our place. You go back to Genesis 22:8. God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And God certainly did that when Christ went to the cross. He said in verse number 28, Ye shall do no work in that same day. It is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. Now, did atonement save? No. The only thing that's ever saved is faith. I uh, listened to some good preaching uh, this uh, last week. I hope they had a good service on Friday night. Hey, man, hey, hey that was good. Uh, but uh, uh, 
Let me just go back, and I'm not going to say a whole lot, but just let me go back to Noah's day. Noah was not saved uh, spiritually by building an ark, and his family wasn't saved spiritually by getting in it. He saved his house physically, all right? It was just simply safety through obedience because we found out that Noah found uh, grace in the eyes of the Lord. What was Noah saved by? He saved by the grace of God. All through the Old Testament, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Go all the way back. The only reason I'm saying that is that salvation did not come through the atonement. The atonement was for the children of Israel nationally. But they got saved individually by looking forward to the coming of the seed of the woman, the Messiah. That's where their salvation is. Salvation's always been in Christ. It's never been an animal. The Bible said the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin over in the book of Hebrews. It didn't take away sin, but it was a type of Christ coming to die in their place for their sin. And they understood that back in the Old Testament. Now, someplace uh, later, Israel just flat lost it and got out of the will of God. In the 400 silent years, uh, that's where you popped up synagogues. Hey, God never intended to synagogue. He intended them to worship at the uh, temple itself at the temple site but then they set up and you got Pharisees, Sadducees uh, you got all these different religious sects that uh, came out of that period of time but they they got to where they thought their righteousness was in what they were doing in their separation for God and uh, boy they missed that boy he talked about uh, those uh, Pharisees and scribes and lawyers and that crowd all through the New Testament uh, he said, hey, you, you put heavy burdens on people they can't bear, but you won't lift one of them with your little finger. Uh, they were simply looking down their religious snout at other people uh, because of, of their con sinful condition. So we find here that this atonement was for you. What's he talking about? He's talking to, about the children of Israel. Reason being, every man did not offer a lamb for himself. They offered that lamb for the nation of Israel, but they got saved by faith and not simply by the blood of this. Now, verse 29, For whatsoever so it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. He said, You're to look at your sin that day and realize that that little lamb had to die for that. The innocence of that little lamb Boy, the importance of these lambs. These were shepherd people. Uh, you think you love your animals. They love their animals. Uh, but at the same time, they had to afflict their souls or they'd be cut off. Verse number 30, And whatsoever soul it be that doth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Look at verse 32. It shall be unto you a Sabbath. These were Sabbaths. A Sabbath of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of, of the month at evening. From evening unto evening ye shall celebrate your Sabbath. So we find Passover. Verse number th uh, 33 he deals with the last, uh, one, the last of these feast days. He said in verse 33, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month there shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. They call that in other places the feast of booths. Uh, it was a type of Israel dwelling in tents. Uh, Israel dwelled in tents uh, for many years before they ever came into the land, built a physical uh, dwelling to live in. But what they did, they made booths or little tents and they dwelled under those tents as a memorial to that day. But he said in verse number uh, 35, On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Again, these holy convocations, these were days that were set apart as holy days unto the Lord. They gave themselves completely to God that day. They did nothing for self. 
But he went on and said in verse 36, Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. These are the feast of the Lord. In verse number 37, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Now, all seven of them. They were called high days. These were feast days that were set aside by Israel along with the normal Sabbath, which was an every day, uh, every week, seventh day. These were holy days unto the Lord. And he said in verse 37, These are feasts unto the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to an offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice, drink offerings, everything upon this day. So they offered all types uh, of offerings on this particular day. Uh, the drink offering is called a libation. just simply means it is poured out before the Lord. It's not something that you drink. I think about David when uh, they were uh, there and they, they were uh, had a siege going on. He said, oh, that I could drink of the wells of Bethlehem. And three of his mighty men broke through the lines and risked their lives to get him to draw from that well and brought him that water. Now, you're talking about thinking a lot of their king. He didn't ask for it. He just said, boy, boy, it'd be nice to get a drink from that well of Bethlehem. Amen. And they broke through. And when they gave it to him, he wouldn't drink. The Bible said he poured that thing out before the Lord. Amen. So we find that in here. But he talked about these feast days. He said, verse number 40, You shall take you on the first day boughs of goodly trees, branches, palm trees, boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month ye shall dwell in booths seven days all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt I am the Lord your God and Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord so we find these seven feasts. I've just kind of hurried through them, their importance to Israel. Uh, we do not necessarily keep these feast days. Uh, we do around, and I don't like the word Easter per se. Uh, the word Easter is only found one time in your King James Bible, and that was a, that was a Roman holiday. That had nothing to do with Passover. That was a Roman holiday. Matter of fact, kept old Peter. They were going to keep him in prison. Said that it was after the days of unleavened bread. That meant Passover was over and unleavened bread was over. But now the feast of Easter was after that. And they were going to leave him alive in there until Easter was passed. It was a Roman holiday. Uh, they've made so much out of uh, Easter and that uh, with all, all of the different things that they do at Easter time. I like, I like to call that time of year Resurrection uh, Sunday when we get to there. Listen, we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day. I pray, Father, you'd bless the service to come. Give us a good day today. I pray that you'd honor the word of God. Be with our people that are out. Lord, we've got people out traveling. We've still got some folks uh, that are under the weather today. But thank you for the rain. Uh, minor inconvenience to us. But Lord, I thank God for every drop that falls. I pray now, Father, that you would bless the remainder of the services today. Meet the need of every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.